everybody thanks for watching true crime time so i did a little more digging on some of the information that i had on brian koberger's instagram account and i really think there's kind of a picture starting to come together about his personality and maybe something tied to an antisocial disorder um, i also have a really interesting discovery to share with you um, check out the video and let me know what you think in the comments below Okay, really quick, I am going to be talking about a couple of Instagram accounts that Brian Koberger was following. I'm in no way implying that any of these accounts or anybody associated with these accounts is involved in the crime or are they responsible for the crime in any way. Um, okay, I just wanted to show everybody, I, I decided to go in and look a little further into some of these accounts that Brian was following. Um, and right off the bat, it got interesting. Uh, I want to show you what I found. So I looked up this Big John's Big Adventure Instagram account. And as it came up, my eyes immediately saw the knife picture down below going into the apple. And I noticed that pumpkin with the Benchmade logo carved into it. Um, for those who don't know, Benchmade makes higher end, um, really high quality knives, um, all types, folding, fixed blade, hunting, survival outdoor type knives. Um, they're one of the more well-known um, top knife makers um, out there. Um, so when I saw that, my first thought was, okay, there's got to be some connection with Brian following this account and the knives. It looked to me right off the bat that there's um, some product um, promotion going on here. So I think that this is some sort of storefront um, account. You know, that was my initial impression. Um, now, I will say I did reach out to this person and I actually had a conversation with him um, on Instagram. And I'm going to share that with you later on in the video. Um, so stand by. I'll show you that here in just a bit. Very nice guy. Had no idea about the crimes. Was really surprised when I told him what was going on. Super helpful. Um, so it's really interesting. I'll show you that conversation we had. Um, so I saw this account. I saw the knife, the, the uh, knife stuff. So I continued to scroll down. I see more knives. A um, couple other knife um, photos here. So I'm really feeling more confident. Here's another one. Confident that uh, here's another that we're on the right track and there's some connection to knives um, with this account. So here's a really interesting one where we see the K-Bar and you might recall early on, the K-Bar is the knife that was discussed um, as being a potential murder weapon in the case. Um, so, you know, it just was interesting that that was an actual knife here on this account. I'll show you, it's just kind of a little uh, post here to try to get a conversation going about, you know, which of these three knives here would you choose if you had to survive, you know, a week in the wilderness. So you'll see the note here before you criticize the K-Bar, you have to say two positive things. First, um, I'm somewhat of an outdoorsman, so I'm, I'm a little bit knowledgeable about knives. And the K-Bar is a knife that people love, but there's a people who will talk bad about it at the same time. Um, so this is somewhat of a joke here, you know, before you say anything about it uh, negative, you need to uh, say two positive things first. Um, so this person who runs this account is is kind of an outdoorsman. He actually is one of those types that would um, suggest to you, you know, what type of gear to carry in your pack, um, you know, what type of equipment would be best for you on any given type of trip, kind of an outfitter um, type of a person. So when I reached out to him again, super nice. Um, and, um, but that's kind of what this is about here. Um, he is, ne he is connected though to a storefront. Um, and so this is where, um, this is what I was kind of getting at when I reached out to him. So I see all the knife, uh, stuff going on here. And I continued to um, just do a quick scan through and, and uh, you know, more knife stuff. And so I was pretty confident that um, there's got to be some connection here, you know, with that. So um, looked up at the top here, um, didn't really see anything. So I did actually click on um, one of these pictures and I noticed down here in the comment um, that he had, um, this is from Casual Adventure. So um, Casual Adventure is the actual storefront for this guy's account. Okay, so I went over to that. Again, another Instagram account, but this is, you know, essentially that guy's storefront, you know, for his business dealings um, piece. The other one was more of his personal account. Um, so we see down here where 
you know, all of the products that they have. And, you know, this is kind of, you know, the idea here. So I decided to go over and take a look at the actual web page. And like I said, this is just an outdoors, you know, sporting goods type storefront, but bear with me. Uh, so as I came down here, um, I noticed that, you know, one of their main products, again, is knives, lots of knives and their featured product. Um, so I, I still feel confident here that the reason Brian was following this account is there has to be some connection. Um, I wonder if this could be the site or the storefront that he purchased his knife from. Um, now I am going to go through a few of these knives. I'm somewhat knowledgeable here, but anybody out there, please correct me on anything. Um, but I'm going to tell you why I don't think some of these would have been chosen. And I'm going to show you a couple that this store does offer that I do think could potentially be the one that he chose or one, uh, one or two that I think he may have chosen. And I'm, I'm coming to that conclusion based off of what this store offers. Um, so as we look through here, we see a lot of these folding knives. Um, these are all high quality knives and don't get me wrong. These would all be very capable of, of committing a crime like that. Um, I just don't think that this would be what his choice would be for that type of a crime. Again, these are high end knives. These are very sharp. The blades on these are anywhere from three to four inches. Um, but this really wouldn't be, in my opinion, what somebody who was going to do what he was planning would choose for that. Um, so that's kind of what I was thinking as I was kind of looking through this site here and, and just trying to kind of piece together his connection to this. Um, so I did a quick scan, you know, typical um, stuff that a, an outdoors store would sell. Um, so I thought back to the initial um, reports and, the, you know, they're, they're talking about it being a fixed blade knife. And they were saying that these wounds were very brutal, very large um, type wounds. So I'm, I'm thinking it's more of a fixed blade type. So I did a, a fixed blade um, search. And there's quite a few of those on here. Um, now, a lot of these would be be very effective, you know, for that type of a crime as well. But you can see they are a little bit smaller. Okay, now this one is the one that really caught my eye right here. Um, now, when we were talking about the K-Bar earlier, um, you may have noticed that there was a large hand guard as well on on that knife. In my opinion, I think that law enforcement was mentioning that make of knife because they're they're looking at the design of the knife and they're comparing that design and the shape to the wounds. And in my opinion, the wounds were the way they were because they had or described the way they were because they had very I, I hate to say it this way, but they had large I guess openings. And so when I when I saw the K-Bar knife, I noticed the design of it. And then as I was scrolling through here, I looked at this knife and I noticed that design with that large hand guard there. And I just imagine if if somebody were to use this and the knife were to penetrate all the way down to the end of the blade, and this were the last part of the knife striking that individual with great force, that something with a large hand guard like this, similar to the K-Bar, could potentially be the type of knife that they're looking for. Let me know what you all think about that. That's my thoughts on why this knife caught my attention and would be more likely to be the type of knife that he would choose in comparison to a knife here on the left where it's got those smooth uh, edges, no hand guard. Um, so when I was looking through this website, I was kind of thinking, you know, which knife would appeal to Brian? And I went through all of them. Um, I mean, I went through all of these and there's a lot of them here that, that would be very effective. Again, um, these are all probably, you know, roughly five inch, um, blades. These are fixed blade knives. These are very well-made knives. They would be very durable. There would be no risk of these breaking or anything like that. These are higher quality steel, um, knives. So these would be capable knives. Again, these would as well. Um, a, there's, there's quite a few of them that are in that same style. These are, um, what they would call kind of a bushcraft type knife. So this would be designed to survive out in the woods and be the only knife you carried on your belt, right? So a very durable, um, well-rounded type knife. Um, but there are, are a few of them here. 
that could have appealed to Brian. You see this one here with the wrapped uh, cord handle. Now, the reason I don't think that it would be this knife is I still do believe that Brian purchased some sort of grip tape based off of his posting of that goon tape video. Um, so I personally think he he did not uh, purchase the, uh, the, the weaved um, cord handle knife. I think he would have gone for more of something like this. And I'll tell you what, when I think of Brian and the pictures that I've seen of him um, in his younger years and the current, for whatever reason, this one just kind of um, fits for me. Um, let me know what you think about that. Does that look like, in your opinion, that would fit his personality? So again, quite a few of these here um, that he could have chosen from. Um, I do think that this is a potential option as well. Um, you know, you can see it's a little bit larger, but again, it doesn't really have that that hand guard that I was talking about. I really think that that's kind of key to the way that the wounds were described. Um, the K-Bar has that large hand guard. It is de uh, designed for combat, same as this knife. This is more of what you would call a combat knife. And I really think that that would appeal more to what Brian would, would have been shopping for um, as he was planning uh, the, the crime. So at this point, I, I, I thought, OK, I'm going to I'm going to reach out to this person and see if, you know, they're even aware that Brian was following them um, on Instagram and um, if maybe they could potentially look up any type of record, right, of, of a um, sale. Okay, so I decided to reach out to him and see if he might be able to help me out. Now, keep in mind, I'm, I'm reaching out to a complete stranger here. Um, my motive for this is, um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm super interested in this case. I really feel bad for the victims. And if this could potentially lead to something that might help the case, I, I really want to try to help. Um, one of the things that's still missing from this whole thing is the murder weapon and that's kind of why i'm intrigued with that and, and i'm doing a little bit of digging here and, and seeing where it leads and and noticing these little pieces or or clues um kind of tied to the murder weapon you know we talked about the grip tape in my last video and then now here we have an outdoor store that that really sells a very wide range of knives um, and so my thinking here is um, this could potentially help and if it's something that hasn't been uncovered yet um, i think it's worth at least you know reaching out and letting this person know so they're so that they're aware and um, they can check into it and if it's nothing you know it's nothing but I, you know it doesn't hurt right so i reached out to him and i just said hey wondering if you can help me by ch by chance did you sell a k-bar through your site in the last six months or so so i was kind of just going with the initial you know what law enforcement had said and this is where he was kind of telling me like i mentioned earlier he doesn't sell anything from that one and then so i just clarified you know i meant from his other site and then i i was just telling him right away i think brian koberger may have purchased a fixed blade knife from you in case you wanted to check your records maybe notify authorities if he did find something so it could be as simple as him doing a, a sales record search you know and he could maybe just see the name pop right up um and if that were the case, they could at least tie that to the other evidence they have, right? And say, okay, look, well, we show him, you know, purchasing this K-bar on whatever date, you know, it could help. Um, so anyway, he, he mentioned here that he didn't think that they had had a K-bar in the store for like over a year. But that could still be tied to Brian. Um, we don't know if he could have been committing crimes earlier on. Um, but again, he said they hadn't had one in the store for a while. Um they do uh, some fixed blades, but those are more like camping and bushcraft, like I mentioned. Um, K-bars are kind of outside of their market, right? So the K-bar is more of a combat type knife. And here you can see he did not know who Brian Koberger was. And so I was kind of just explaining to him, you know, why I was reaching out to him and, and told him, you know, he's the guy that was arrested. Um, and I explained that they're still searching for the knife and um, it's suspected to be a K-bar or similar and I pointed out that the reason I was reaching out to him is because uh, Brian Koberger had been following his Instagram account. Um, and it's possible that he had purchased the knife for the crime um, from his store. It might be worth a look. 
um, and he was surprised as you can see there um, and he was super helpful right off the bat and he decided to start looking into it right away um, so we chatted a little bit here and I kind of showed him the Instagram and where his name was um, he was kind of checking into it I mentioned it's probably deleted by now um, these are old screenshots that I had before this was all all deleted so um, so he checked and the last K bar they had was in April of 2020 um, no I don't know what the significance of that could be it's possible if, if that's the last one they got in that it didn't sell until later that year you know it could have sold at a later date that's just the last time that they got in um, so it's still possible that that could be the you know it could be a K bar um, but again, he checked for that. The last one they had was April of 2020. Um, and he says usually for those types of knives, they would have to do like a special order. Um, they don't keep them in stock too much because it's outside of their specialty. Um, and then he said that they would normally get information from the customers in those cases. Um, but in this case, he wasn't able to find any connection there to a K-Bar. Um, so I just explained, you know, it didn't have to be a K-Bar. It could be a similar knife. Um, and, um, you know, thanked him for checking into it and kind of gave him a, a little more info about what we know about the case as far as recently law enforcement is saying that it could have been a serrated edge knife. And um, I thanked him again and asked him to let me know if he did find out anything. Um, let him know that Brian lived in um, Pennsylvania in Washington State. And uh, he responded here that he's he's going to have to scrutinize his um, knife purchases a little bit more now and um, he also was kind of saying that that's um, more of a common knife to see in like a military surplus type, type uh, store um, and then he asked me he said oh so is this why people are commenting on my page asking if I sold a knife so there's obviously other people who have looked into this account and probably put together the idea of a um, knife being purchased from this person's store um, so again, here he um, was a little bit surprised and I was just explaining it's a huge case. And, uh, you know, he was just saying here that a lot of people come through the stores and he's actually going to reach out to other people that he knows um, that work with those stores and see if they can dig anything up about uh, any sales of any type of knife that might match Brian Koberger, you know, maybe any record of his name or anything like that. Um, so again, I thanked him down here. And um, he's glad that they uh, found him. He, he offered to um, ask any questions about any uh, knives or anything like that. So he might be somebody we could even reach out to and, and ask to join one of our panels on a live stream and talk about a little bit of his, his expertise um, on the matter. And he, he could even still d uncover something for us as he and his um, the other people he know look into this. Um, so just kind of, you know, offering him some of what I know about the case and it being a larger fixed blade, possibly serrated knife. Um, in my opinion, he would have bought it specifically for committing the crime. I don't think he was purchasing a um, bushcraft knife. I think he, he would have had something specific in mind and I think it would have been something very intimidating and, and um, kind of more of a combat or a very aggressive type knife. Um, so I, I pointed that out here because I was looking on the website and I did notice that one knife that I showed you earlier with that large hand guard. Um, and that was that tops operator seven. Um, and, um, so he, uh, kind of responded here that he'll be looking into that this evening. Um, so again, super helpful guy, um, was really, um, compassionate about the crimes as he learned about it. Um, and I was kind of trying to give him a little bit of insight here about Brian so that he could maybe piece that together as he was doing his research. If there was anything weird that that stood out, um, kind of explaining a little bit about the personality of Brian. So he had responded here that he was thinking, well, maybe the K-Bar because the K-Bar is a cheaper knife that you could easily throw away, you know, and, and it wouldn't be this expensive knife that you're getting rid of. Um, but I kind of in my opinion, I, I think that Brian would have chosen something and, and would have looked for something a little more 
higher quality because I do think that this would be a knife that he was he either has used in the past for multiple crimes or he would have used it continuously. I don't think he was looking for a knife that he was going to use and then ditch. I I think the knife has significant um, meaning to him. And in my opinion, I don't think he ditched the knife, like threw it in a river. I think he's hidden the knife somewhere because I think he um, did intend to continue to use the same knife. So in my opinion, I think he would have been shopping for a higher end knife um, that that would have been kind of his, you know, go-to type of thing for when he was committing his crimes. Let me know what you think about that. Um, that's my thoughts, but um, the reason I'm doing this channel is I'm really interested to know what everybody else thinks, so please comment below. So he he's kind of thinking, okay, you know, based off some, some of my feedback, you know, maybe that the tops one might make sense. Um, again, explaining a little bit about Brian's personality here. Um, I'm telling him kind of think Hannibal Lecter over your common criminal, um, explaining kind of how some of these, how the, the crimes had been committed. Um, and so he's kind of agreeing here that maybe the nicer knife might make more sense. Um, and then here he's just expressing that, um, you know, he, he's an outdoors person and he, but he's not okay with that. Right. And he feels really bad about even being associated with that guy, you know, and, and having, having his account on his account, you know, so, um, it's absolutely not his fault. And this guy, um, has been really helpful. So, um, and then he also asked me to share with everybody else that he's going to do everything that he can to help. And he's going to be reaching out to everybody he knows and, uh, see, see if they can uncover anything at all in their records on a sale of a knife that might be tied to Brian. Um, so here I just, uh, you know, kind of was pointing out to him as well that he followed companies like Goon Tape. Um, so he was probably very well versed on weapons, um, tactical type gear. Um, and, you know, based off, off of the other research that I've done on Brian, that makes sense to me. And I'm going to show you one other thing here before this video ends that is really interesting that ties to my last video, kind of brings us all the way around full circle to this antisocial personality that I think Brian may have been dealing with. Um, so here, this Instagram person again is, you know, knives are brutal. He's feeling really bad about this crime. Um, so just reminding him here um, that, um, you know, this could help the victims. That's the whole point of this. If there's anything that he could find in, in their records, send it over to them. And um, who knows, it, it could be helpful. So let me know what everybody thinks. You know, Brian is following this outdoors channel um, or I'm sorry, this outdoors in Instagram account. And that account essentially sells a wide range of knives. Do you think this could be potentially where he purchased the knife that he used in the crimes? So we wrapped up our conversation here. Uh, he is all in. He's contacted some other guys he knows so that they can... Um, check their records and he uh, wants to help in any way that he can. And um, so hopefully we hear back from him. Who knows? Maybe we hear some good news and, and he uncovers something big for us. Um, but if not, at least we've exhausted one other av avenue and um, we can move on to something else. So I'm going to show you this other piece that I was talking about where um, I really am starting to believe that Brian has this antisocial personality. Um, if you recall in my last video, um, we uncovered quite a few things around this kind of ski mask theme. Okay, so you might recall in my last video that um, we had discovered this uh, company called Zero Sleep. They're a um, clothing company and they, you can see here, they market um, ski masks and um, kind of this, you know, you can see the hat here where it says militia on it. Um, so this is kind of... Um, this weird culture that Brian seemed to be following. Remember, again, in my last video, we were talking about the playlist that he could have potentially been listening to. Um, and that playlist was titled uh, Beats to Plan Your Crimes To. Um, so we kind of followed that down the rabbit hole. And that led us to this um, 
you know, zero sleep company that, that sells this interesting uh, clothing line here. Um, but I do believe that this has some sort of connection to a um, culture out there that is uh, some sort of um, antisocial type culture. And I'm going to show you what else uh, I discovered from Brian's Instagram accounts. Um, so I looked up a couple of those that he was following. And there was another one that, that came up here. That's this one here, End of Era 76. Um, so just checked into that one briefly. And um, you can see it just brings us to this page. Um, but what I wanted to point out here was, again, we have this kind of theme here um, where, where we have the, uh, you can see here the ATF jacket, um, you know, and the, the weapons here. Um, and so um, just kind of another connection to that kind of antisocial persona uh, that, that Brian seemed to be following for whatever reason. Um, and then there's another one here. Okay, so Brian was following this other account here on his Instagram. And you can see here it says Goons Antisocial. I thought that was pretty interesting because in my previous video, we were discussing about how we uncovered that link to goon tape and uh when i saw goons antisocial again i kind of put that together and i wonder if that's some sort of culture type thing out there or a style or something but you know with the goon style um, but here we just have that word goon once again linked to brian um, so i looked at this account and you can see here um, it's just kind of that same type of theme in some of the other social media uh, links that we found. Um, down here, you can see there's quite a bit of uh, tactical gear. Um, and, you know, you see the name of this place is Goons Antisocial. Um, this, to me, I think has a, maybe a little more significance um, because there were some additional things that I had actually uncovered while researching my last video that I wasn't able to share on the video. It was just too graphic. Um, and to be honest, a little bit too disturbing um, in, in regards to what that content was. But there was a lot of stuff in there um, that that was also related to this kind of antisocial uh, persona that I believe Brian was struggling with. Um, I think there were uh, two sides to him. I think he was kind of trying to go that straight and narrow and um, kind of have that front um, for everybody to show everybody, oh, I'm doing great now you know, I've overcome this, these problems in my life, but I think he was really struggling. And I think that he did kind of fall into some sort of obsession, you know, um, with Kaylee and Maddie. And I think that was also tied to kind of this antisocial uh, OCD type personality. Um, so let me know what you all think about this information that I've shared tonight. Um, I'll let everybody know if I find anything new. I really appreciate everybody watching. Um, please take a moment to subscribe. Only about 10% of my viewers are subscribing right now. Um, that would really help me out. If we can hit 50, um, I can start doing live streams. And I have some really cool things in store when we can do that. Um, thanks again for watching, and I'll see everybody soon.